Hello, thank you for joining us. Um, today we're doing this cool ECTC spotlight on a new initiative by the Arts and Humanities Division called Decolonizing the Curriculum. Uh, today I have with me Jerisa and Gary who are gonna talk about this new initiative. Uh, Jerisa, can you introduce yourself really fast? Of course, hi. Hey everyone, my name is Jerisa Lamonts and I'm the Director of Cultural Diversity for Elizabethtown Community and Technical College. Gary. And I'm Gary Sturz, and I'm a professor of history in the Arts and Humanities Division. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so Gary, uh, would you mind um, kind of explaining what is decolonizing the curriculum for us? Well, basically, decolonizing the curriculum has been defined as creating space and resources for a dialogue among all members of the college community on how to imagine and envision all cultures and ways of learning to respect what is taught and how it frames the world. For arts and humanities courses, it would mean a fundamental reconsideration of what topics, sources, and narratives to be chosen and pr presented in class. It's not about eliminating white men from the curriculum. It is about challenging long-standing biases, omissions, and to include more diverse and previously overlooked topics and sources, especially women and non-white Europeans. Awesome, that is a really hot topic of, I guess, the 21st century. Um, so that's really exciting that we're starting this. I'm very proud. So um, can you tell us a bit like how and when did decolonizing uh, become a trend in higher education? Well, decolonization to historians refers to the dismantling of European empires following World War II from 1945 to 1970. And in the late 1960s, there were many uh, reform and protest movements on colleges. Some uh, focused on the curriculum and reforming higher education. But more recently, in 2011, there was an international conference on decolonizing the university at Sands University, Malaysia. And that was followed up in 2015 at the University of South Africa by the Roads Must Fall protest movement. This was a movement to remove the statue of Cecil Rhodes from the university. Cecil Rhodes was a late Victorian imperialist, an ardent racist and expansionist. This spread to Oxford University at Oriel College and that movement is still going on today. But out of these uh, protest movements spun decolonizing the curriculum. And this has emerged and spread among the Anglosphere, Britain, South Africa, the United States, and New Zealand. That's really neat. It's almost like a grassroots sort of thing. Um, so let's talk about your division with Arts and Humanities. Um, how did the Arts and Humanities Division get involved with this initiative? Well, recent events, and I have to give a nod to Dr. Pate, our ECTC president. On the 4th of June, he sent out an email to the college. We are one ECTC in response to the pain and protests uh, following the deaths of uh, Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. And he called on the faculty to make a commitment to enact positive change. And two days after that, my division chair, Jacqueline Hawkins, sent an email to the division asking us to think about programs and activities for this academic year with themes of racial justice and other related topics. Our division has a reputation for supporting diverse, a diverse climate. So at our division's August meeting, I proposed the Decolonizing the Curriculum Initiative and uh, Dina Lilligran and Maggie Brown, our English professors, they launched an anti-racism book club. Awesome, we've got lots of things going on. So Jerisa, really fast, uh, speaking of the E-Town example, can you talk a bit about that and how your um, office of cultural diversity is involved? Sure, so um, I'll follow Gary's uh, explanation of the E-Town example, and it's just us setting the example as a college, as an institution, um, to create those safe spaces um, as we provide opportunities for, to draw in our diverse learners. We've also got to be sure that our curriculum and our examples 
um, are reflective and supportive of that diverse culture. So um, that's that's a bit about how my office feeds into that. So um, I think it's very important that, you know, we're very, very good at recruiting, you know, our minorities, um, but we've also got to make sure that when they're here, that we're providing them opportunities um, to learn the truth. Um, so I think we have a risk to do that as, as higher education administrators. Um, was just very pleased when Gary presented this ideal to me and I just wanted to fit in some way. Um, so I am just couldn't be prouder of the Arts and Humanities Division for really thinking outside the box and really feeding into that ideal of we're responsible for creating that, that cultural competent student. Um, that we send out into the world uh, to be globally competitive. So curriculum and programming and initiatives like this are, are spot on for, for our goals as an institution. Fantastic. Uh, so really fast, what is the goal of the Arts and Humanities Division and decolonizing the curriculum? The simple way to say it, Emmy, is it's, it's revealing a lot of the truths about the systems that all of us depend on daily, you know, and he just went into those systems right now. And I just want to say that I think that this pro this initiative is really just perfect timing um, as we're going. We have saw a lot of disparities with um, racial injustice, with police force, um, with, you know, COVID has revealed a lot of disparities. And um, I just think this is, is, is timely, very, very timely of the Arts and Humanities Division to, um, to put us out there. And, and it makes me proud to be a part of an institution that, that has faculty that cares about um, telling the truth to their students and, and revealing those inequities. So I couldn't be prouder. I'm always proud to be a Baron, but things like these just, just really just make it even better. Well said, well said. Okay, so let's talk about the schedule. I heard there's some really interesting uh, speaker series going on. So, Jerisa, can you talk about the dates and times of those? Um, so, we'll kick off our Decolonizing the Curriculum initiative um, in February on the 25th with Decolonizing the Philosophy Curriculum. Um, that will be given by our very own Dr. John Dryden. Um, it's entitled Post-Colonial Criticisms of the Western Philosophical Tradition. Um, so, you know, like, this is something I can I can learn from, so I'm excited to to hear about that. Um, and then on the 15th, we actually have two presentations. Um, we'll have Professor Mary Rigney, who will talk about examining systemic racism from Reconstruction to present, um, which I think is, like I said, a very timely spot on topic to be presenting. Um, that will come through our Decolonizing the History curriculum on the 15th, as I mentioned. And we also have Dr. Gary Stearns, who's here. Um, his topic will be acknowledging Africans in Roman, medieval, and Renaissance history. Um, and then we will end uh, the initiative on the 19th of April with decolonizing the music, which I have to say, I'm really excited about this one. Um, and that will be given by Dr. Andrew Reinhardt. Um, and that will be entitled Decolonizing Musical Narratives. And I bet he's going to discuss that country music was not actually created by who you think it was created by. And I just can't wait to to really just tear. I love, I'm a music lover. So I'm really excited about our, the titles and, and the series of initiatives that we're given. Awesome. So um, our our listeners and, and watchers uh, will see all of this posted on social media. And if you're a current student with us, you'll most likely get a KCTCS email into your account uh, with the links to all of those virtual uh, sessions. So, uh, Jerisa, uh, Gary, thank you so much for joining us today uh, on this ECTC Spotlight on Decolonizing the Curriculum and the Arts and Humanities Division um, initiative that's starting, let's see, I guess kicking off uh, February 25th, but uh, this will be a college-wide initiative and uh, hopefully it sticks around for a long time. So thanks so much uh, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Emmy. Thanks.